so uh, thank you very much for um, for being here. Um, okay, nine people in the room, and I'm going to talk to you about something that um, Wipro, I work for Wipro, um, has been developing and is going to contribute to Finos. Uh, so it, what you see here is a is a uh, kind of a teaser presentation of what will be made available as open source uh, for the world. It's going to be posted on the Finos GitHub and then everybody can, uh, will be able to use it. And so what we're talking about, what we're going to talk about here is basically um, what we call the OSMM, the Open Source Maturity Model. So I wrote it in here once here, I, just so, so that we make sure we all know what we're talking about. And it's basically, it's a tool that we're developing uh, that, that aims at helping organizations, you know, figure out the, the best way to use open source, meet their corporate objectives, and, and make the decisions that are relevant to that. Um, and, and it works by um, providing a, an assessment tool that lets you figure out where you're today and where you could be in terms of open source maturity, which looks at adoption, use, contribution, et cetera, uh, where you could be um, given how, you know, your, your corporate DNA, the way you work, what you're trying to achieve, et cetera. So it, it, it's not just a measuring tool, but also a tool that lets you have a glimpse at the future, okay? It might not give you all the tools to get there once you've identified where you can go, but it will give you a hint of where you could be. So why is this needed? Um, why are we looking at this? Well. First of all, you know, if, if you're going to, to want to modernize your organization, and I was just on a discussion earlier on where we're talking about uh, the financial institutions and the legacy uh, uh, elements that uh, plague the, the financial institution world, uh, when we want to move ahead and catch up with the neobanks, uh, we're going to need to, uh, to find new ways of developing software. Huh? Rather than, than acquiring software, or sometimes even just you know downloading software. Uh, an example I, I like, I love to give actually, is what Revolut. You, you all know Revolut, right? What Revolut is doing today. If you look at their GitHub, um, they're actually using to develop their mobile application components that have been developed by Airbnb. Okay, and they contribute to this code. So. Um, and this is, this is public information because you can see it on the GitHub. <laughs> it's very simple. Um, so, you know, if you're going to, to want to become the next uh, 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 financial institution that provides services to the millenniums, millennials, uh, you have to find a new way to develop your software. And, and that's going to require working with open source, working on open source, etc. cetera. Um, also, um, you know, these new ways of developing require significant adoption of open source components. And sometimes it's already there. Uh, I've seen banks, I said that uh, earlier on in, in, in the previous session, for those of you who already heard me, I'll probably repeat, but um, one of the banks we work with, they, when we asked them before working with them, how many open source components do you use internally? They said, ah, we're pretty good. Three to 600, 300 to 600 components we use internally. And you said, oh, fine. So we started our work with them by a full-fledged assessment where we queried every single team in the organization and we found 6,000 open source components, but they didn't know they were using all of these because you know, this team doesn't speak to this team, which hasn't beat to that team. That said, um, if you're going to want to work like the next generation of financial services institutions, you will need to be using open source components all over the place and manage them. So you'll need to govern the use of open source. You'll need to find ways to support these components, whether you use external support or you build your support teams internally. Um, and that means that um, you know, it will become more and more complex to manage all of that until you put in place the right governance and the right tools, right? So, uh, so all of this is measured in the open source maturity model, and it aims at telling you whether you're ready or not or where you are on that road to being ready to be, you know, as agile, uh, not in the agile method, I'll leave it, as, as dynamic in your uh, software development as the, the, the neobanks and all of these new financial services institutions are. Because frankly, if you don't get there, they'll be ahead of you. And it's, by the way, it's not just neobanks. I, I was talking to a bank in Oman, uh, well, when we could still travel. And, and they, they were, they're a new bank, and they're, but they're creating themselves as a normal bank, but they're developing all of their software with open source. 
because they have to go fast and they don't have the, the money to do it by acquiring, you know, Temenos or whatever super fancy uh, core banking software platform that everybody else uses. So they're going open source. And that's, that actually lets them leapfrog, leapfrog the competition um, in the traditional banking world. So, yeah, for everybody, not just the neobanks. Um, so this is the first, you know, uh, this is not the first time we do this maturity model. We've been using it internally at Wipro uh, and for people who joined Wipro over the some time uh, for probably over two decades uh, in some form or another. So this is the third generation of this model, which is why we're still refining that new generation. So it's, it's not yet public, but it will be. Um, it's the result of over 300 engagement with various uh, customers, including financial services. So it's built on experience. It's not just a something that you know that some marketing person figured out that you know would make sense to do. Um, and and so we we use primary research, which is what we found out, and secondary research, which was which comes from research organization that we we leverage for doing our work. So it's really something based on experience. Okay, and that's important because when people run the, the, the questionnaire, the assessment, they will find things that, yeah, I've heard of this. We don't do it, or we do, but I've heard of it. Um, and so the idea is that we'll have a, a, a first beta release sometime first half of October, um, and that's going to be something people can play with and look at it. You're actually going to see a demo. I'll, I'll run a little video afterwards. Um, and then we're going to post that to GitHub, so it's going to be made available directly uh, for everybody. And then um, second half of October, we'll have a version that is not only an individual assessment. You run the assessment and you get your results. And it tells you, from your perspective, this is what your company looks like. But we'll be able to run uh, a, a session for multiple employees of the same, of the same company. And it will collate the results and, and propose a, uh, an overall view of the organization. And this is where it gets interesting, because you can again have this assessment run by developers, uh, users, uh, legal, uh, you name it. You, 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 all of the people in the enterprise who should be touched by open source will be able to contribute to building an overall picture. And that's really important because open source touches everything. Um, you know, if, if, you're, if your innovation team isn't looking at open source, you're going to lack, uh, to miss uh, a good part of, of your innovation capabilities. Actually, um, it, it, for those of you who were in the uh, session uh, previously about uh, the results of the open source survey uh, that Linux Foundation did, uh, I think the number is 84% of organizations find that the most important benefit of doing open source is innovation, is driving innovation through open source. So, you know, um, you have to involve your innovation people, but you have to involve your legal people, your risk people, your procurement people, your sourcing, etc. So, uh, so how does it work? Okay, uh, I'm going to go into some of the details. I don't want to dive too deeply, but if you do have questions, feel free to ask. Um, but um, the the whole point is we have a survey. It starts with a survey that has about 50 questions. Um, out of an overall 150 plus, and, and we figured out that for a, an individual survey, somebody who just wants to get a, uh, a, a, an easy picture, 50 is way enough. When we are conducting this as part of a paid engagement for, for you know, an organization where we can actually force people to respond to every question we ask them, then there is a 150 question uh, version of it. But of course, it takes like half an hour or something, and nobody in their right mind wants to answer that just for the fun. So, so it's a 50 question, 50 question surveys that um, focuses on a number of axes, six of them, um, uh, or seven, uh, and those are not represented here, actually, but um, six, six or seven axes, three, three major ones that have elements, sub-elements, I'll talk to them about, talk about them. And, and so it gives you a, a perspective on the various aspects of open source maturity. Um, as a result of this, um, we tell you where you are on the maturity model. Are you just an ad hoc user, or are you a, uh, uh, in, in a managed state, or are you in a, in a leading state? There are five stages, actually, uh, that we'll look at. And it tells you where you are for all of these five axes, uh, three axes, and, and multiple sub-elements. It'll give a very nicely uh, visible spider chart. I have a picture of that in these slides. And also uh, charts. I will have those in the video afterwards. So you can see what it looks like. And some interview feedback when we are conducting the full 
corporate survey where we also add to these questions actual in-person interviews, okay? Um, so uh, it, it does a current analysis based on the interviews. We can give a future state planning, then we can you know, help implement, uh, drive the implementation, take or retake surveys to make sure where we are, uh, if we are involving in the right way on the maturity model. And that gives a great tool to, uh, to then implement uh, an enhanced open source strategy, model, processes, etc. So how does it work? Um, so first of all, I said we have three main axes, strategy, management, and users, and usage. So we look at these three, and under each we have dimensions uh, that, broke, that break down the, the, the major axis into its, its elemental parts. And, uh, and for each of these uh, elements, we actually have five different stages of maturity. Ad hoc, aware, managed, engaged, and leading. Ad hoc is basically we're using some open source. We have no idea how to manage it. People are doing it by themselves. It's a huge risk, especially in the financial services space. Aware is when your management knows that you're doing this. So, you know, if you ask somebody who's a little higher in the organization about open source usage, the answer will be yes. Um, uh, as an example of not being there is when I talked to a bank in South Africa and uh, we were talking, the discussion was actually not on open source, it was on blockchain. And we were in this big room with the CIO and their whole team. And uh, we asked this, the, them if they were, or how advanced were they in their blockchain uh, story? And the CIO said, we're not even started yet. We don't, you know, we don't do anything with blockchain. We're just exploring. And somebody at the back of the room raised a hand and said, actually, that's not really true. Um, in our lab, we actually downloaded a copy of the Ripple uh, server and stack, and because it's open source and we're using it. So this is ad hoc. <laughs> CIO has no idea <laughs> that they're doing this, um, and, but they're doing it. And, and so you don't want to get, you, you, know, you don't really want to stay there. Um, and then we have the aware where management knows about things going on. Manage is typically where you actually have legal get, in the, in, in, get involved and put all kinds of hurdles for people to use open source by saying, you can't do this, you can't do that, you have to go through this loop, you have to go through that loop. And basically it's a pain in the butt for everybody, but at least the risk is controlled. Then you have engaged where you're starting to put in place policies, procedures to do things that aim at helping people be more efficient in their consumption, contribution, publication of open source. And finally leading where your strategy actually leverages open source activities to derive business benefits. Okay, so, so we looked at these five levels and we will tell you for each of these where you are. Um, we work by having attributes for each of these stage. What characterizes this stage? It actually translates into the questionnaire itself. So the question is, do you have this? Do you have processes? Do you use tools? Do you blah, blah, blah. Implications, what does it mean? Like I said, for ad hoc, huge risk. <laughs> Managed, less risk, but it's a pain in the butt, so you're not moving, uh, and, and you know, etc. And then the activities, which is what you need to do to get from that stage to the next stage. So that helps automatically structure the, 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 the next steps, if you want, on that, uh, on, on that model. Um, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, the way it works then, oh, by the way, I should have said that at the beginning, but if you do have questions, interrupt me rather than waiting for the end, because when you wait for the end, then I have to scroll back to the slide the question applies to, and you know. So feel free to interrupt at any point in time. The way it runs is we have a survey, we have, uh, that runs on, a, uh, uh, on the Lime survey engine, actually. Um, it's an open source engine. That's why we picked this one uh, rather than SurveyMonkey. Um, it's, uh, there's an instance hosted uh, at Finos. So it can run off of Finos's infrastructure. But because it's open source, you could actually download Lime survey, download the model, the definition files for the question, implement it on your own server, and run it by yourself. Uh, Wipro actually has that tool also in-house. Uh, since we use the same tool to do the assessments for our customers when they hire us to do an assessment on their open source uh, maturity. So it's really the same tool. Um, and and it, because it's open source, you can use it by yourself. Um, there's a scoring engine that takes the questions, the, the, the weighings we put on each of these answers based on the category of the people, the demographics, etc. And then there is a, um, uh, an engine that takes all of this, moves it, and creates graphs and things like that, and provides an output. That's very nice. Um, so as an example, and here you have the actual um, uh, elements, 
that we look at for each of these uh, three axes. Uh, and this is an example of you know, a, a typical output where you'd say you're aware on this stage or at the managed state on corporate alignment, you're ad hoc in community and ecosystem engagement. So this, for example, would mean eh, you don't do anything and somebody that does it, they're probably doing it on their own from their personal machine because, and you don't control it, so you don't know if they're posting proprietary stuff or not. It's basically done in a very dangerous way, but it's done. So, you know. Um, this is an example of uh, the, you know, the, the spider chart you would get. So it's giving a few um, elements uh, for um, one of the axes. Uh, and it's giving you where you are. That's the brown graphic here. And given what we know from the organization and how it works, where you could be. This requires some more uh, focused analysis. So when you run the assessment by yourself, you get this one. When you run it with involvement from Wipro, uh, who does uh, further analysis and individual in, uh, um, interviews, then we can provide something like this. There's nothing somebody, stopping anybody else from doing that. Obviously, the model is public and anybody can use it, but this is what you'd get. Automated tools will give you just the, uh, the, the current state. So that's what I wanted to show. So really a few things. I'm going to run a quick video. Um, try to run it at low speed so that you see what it looks like. Sorry, I need my glasses to see what my machine is doing. Um, so this is showing um, the, the answering of uh, a few questions. So the first two steps I'm showing, then I, I'll skip through all of the questions and then I'll show you, it shows briefly what it looks like uh, so this is purely for demographics purposes, by the way. We're not, we're not you know, using in this individual, it's just so, so we know where, where people are based. So this is what it looks like. Questions, you click, you answer, you have yes, no, don't know questions. You have multiple choice questions. And, and there's a scoring engine behind that that counts the answers and decides what they mean. Um, and, uh, and, and when you do that, this is a little time skip. Um, after you've finished all of these questions, um, and this can be, by the way, this is running on Lime Survey. It could be branded. So if you want to implement it yourself, there's a skinning engine, and you just brand that. And the result looks like this, scoring brutally scored. Um, and uh, with the you know, various examples, your assessment score for contribution, publication, etc. cetera. Um, those are what the, um, the uh, uh, graphics look like. Do I have a pause key? Yeah. So that's, that's the per, you know, per category, per, uh, per um, question, so the, the brutal data, if you want. And uh, I don't have in here the spider chart because the scoring engine and the graphing engine is actually, I got a message this morning saying it was finished. <laughs> but it's a little too late for me to create, to integrate that in the video. But that's typically what you would be getting. Uh, I'll pause here before it closes. So that's what it looks like. Um, and, uh, and as I said, this is going to be made um, published this first half of October. You'll find it on, on Finos's GitHub. And the point of putting it on GitHub is that obviously we want people to participate because even though this, is, this model is a result of years of experience at Wipro and a lot of people getting involved in providing answers to these questions for us, you may actually have a slightly different experience and want to bring your feedback into this. So, you know, once it's, it's there on GitHub, feel free to raise issues, to make pull requests and, 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 and comments. It's an open source project, okay? Uh, it's an open source project which is mostly focused on data, which build a questionnaire, rather than coding, because we're just, the, the main coding is basically a matrix uh, that has the scoring engine implemented a little bit a little bit of logic but um, you know nothing that that it requires significant uh, uh, java coding or but i think it's written in python i'm not the one doing the coding so i don't <laughs> i don't remember but it's uh the country the most important contribution would be helping us with with the scoring if you think we're we are too aggressive on one side or not enough on another side or with maybe adding questions and, and things like that I'm talking about adding questions. Do you have any questions to add to my presentation today? <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so just to confirm, the scoring engine is open source as well. Is what? The scoring. Yeah, engine. it is. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, it's basically a, a matrix of ways for questions and sure. but yes. And then the, the second thing is all of this is open source. By the all of it. of it being hosted on FinOps, does that not therefore provide an opportunity for FinOps to therefore start to get a picture of the industry through those responses to those surveys? So um, fully agree with you. Um, for that to happen, it would require a bit of uh, of tweaking. The way the engine is designed is it can provide individual surveys or it could provide corporate surveys. So it would be an instance running per organization. Um, and maybe Finos you know, wants to do a global survey, in which case they would create an instance that takes all of the answers and put them together. It's, we haven't talked to them about doing that. Um, it could be a next step or an early step or something like that. Because you, you know that, um, well, you might not if you were not in the session before, but um, Linux Foundation just created a, something called LF Research, which is responsible for doing research for the various projects. And, um, and so Lin, um, Finos uses results from LF Research. So they could also provide insight for LF Research. This would be a great tool to do that and could be used as part of one of the surveys or as the survey directly. So yeah, great idea. Here and then there. Oh, okay. Here and then there. <laughs> you're going have, gonna to have to speak a little louder because I don't hear really well and the mask. <laughs> So if you remember what I put in my slide here, this is all done through open source. This requires a lot of thinking, expertise, and is done by people. So what we're hoping to get from this, if you want our business model here, is that we want people to run the model, be happy that they get a result that gives them a view, and then come to us and say, okay, so what do we do now? And then we say, well, we're take, gonna take the same model and instead of just you doing it, we're gonna have 20 people from your organization and then we're gonna run a series of interviews with X people. We'll take an hour or two to figure out how many people from which teams in your organization we interview. We're gonna conduct these interviews. This usually takes two to three months. And then we're going to build a plan for going from here to there. So that's how we make money. We get engaged after somebody's played with this, likes it, and wants to know more. And not everybody's gonna want to know more, right? Some people are just happy figuring out that, yep, they're doing pretty good. And so they tell their management, yep, we're doing pretty good. And their management is, hey, we're doing pretty good. So, so that, you know, that's, that's a model that works. And it's like all open source, right? If I, if I create something as open source and make it available for people to download, some people are gonna download and use it. And then others are gonna say, okay, I wanna go to production with this and I need support. So I'm gonna buy added value services. That's the added value service they get from us. They could get it from somebody else, but we have you know, hundreds of hours of working on these projects. So, so we have some pretty good um, uh, experience to sell in doing that. Um, actually, that's one of the things we do with some of our customers is we do you know, a first assessment uh, like this, kind of for free, um, and, and then it gets them, not all of them, but quite a few actually wanna know more and get better. Um, one of the typical way we do this is um, once we've done the first assessment, we actually have a look at their open source strategy, if they have any, and then we work with them to e e make it evolve so that it, it can bring them to the blue thing from a strategic perspective. And then they have to work on implementing it, and that's another project. And creating the new strategy is a, a few months of work, and then creating an, implement an implementation plan and implementing it is years of work together. So, so there is a clear business model for us for doing this, but there is a value for running this as open source uh, as well. So, and, and you know, it's, it's like the, 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 the freemium stuff. If, if what you provide for free gives no value, people aren't gonna be interested in this. Well, we think this has value. We think it gives an interesting in, insight and it might make some want to know more. Seniority that this is 
causing that, and then what is the actual case happening? Is it companies that are starting out as a startup, or is it targeting you know, JP Morgan's of the world, mm. or Google's of the world? What, what, what is it? What, what would be the case for the more established uh -huh. long term? Honestly, all of them. Um, it's it really depends it's both in terms of companies as in terms of demographics inside the company right somebody who's a developer will have a certain perspective on this stuff um, and somebody who's in legal or in procurement might have a completely different perspective on this stuff and so the answer they will give is going to be different so if only one person does this survey they will have a you know a, a very um, polarized view of what they can see and it might give them some insight uh, but it's basically representing in a way what they already know, but modelized based on how we see the industry. So, so they see this, they, they probably will be interested. They might call one of their colleagues and say, yeah, I saw this super interesting model. You want to you know, run it also and see what you see. Uh, and, and, and when they start getting slightly different perspective because they're in different teams, you know, this is when they probably say, okay, we need to have a better view on this and, and more uh, 360 degree view on our, on our organization. And then when we run these surveys in, in, a, in, a, in a comprehensive mode, we will make sure that the demographics of the respondents actually uh, are enough. We, like we have like a normal survey sample, you know, if you don't cover all of your, your demographics, yeah. you're not going there. Well, if, if I go back to, to my model here, um, you know, when you're in ad hoc or aware mode, that's where legal would, you know, use this to say, oh, we need to put some serious amount of control in here. And then we get into managed. So once legal does that, there is this uncomfortable moment where all the developers who were contributing or using and downloading stuff realize they can't do it anymore. They're upset. So, but at least risk is managed. And this is where uh, you know management comes into play and say, okay, no, no, okay, now this is controlled. Now let's get to the next step. Uh, and, and we did that with a bank actually here in the UK uh, that had they were in in this like super managed state where everything they did was seen from a risk perspective and and so had to be handled from a risk perspective. If you want to start using an open source project, it's a risk. How do we make sure that it doesn't blow up in our face, etc.? So they went by putting in place the right kind of tools and processes, so that would be the activities here, um, by putting in place the right kind of tools and processes, they went from having this is a risk type of approach to, yeah, risk is handled by the processes, let's focus on the benefits of doing this. And that is a very, very interesting uh, model because that lets you move from, from, from manage to engage or even leading. Once you see every open source activity from the benefits it brings because risk is handled, you're in, you, you're in a position to go from engaged to leading. How can we actually derive even more benefits and how can our strategy for open source support our corporate business objectives? And that's, where, that's when you're actually leading. So, so in terms of demographics internally, depending on who you have participating in the survey, you're going to get some insight on some aspect or another. And then once you know we get involved uh, in creating that blue box around it of where you can be this is where we start creating the, the, the activities for the next steps in terms of companies who might be interested in doing this um, i you know i would say everyone but typically what happens is that in startups they don't have they, they don't usually bother too much about this they, they go full speed with open source and then when they have open source everywhere they realize that they may be taking slight bit of a risk and when they talk to a VC for a next round of funding or for a merger or an acquisition, uh, that's when they realize they missed the boat on some risk control and license uh, you know, validation and things like that, which might have been identified um, um, by running this model. So, so it, it, would, it will benefit all kinds of structures that are considering using open source or already using open source and need to figure out if they're doing it well or not uh, and, and if they're you know, taking a risk. Are a 
least representative. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, if your 50 respondents have no visibility of an open source strategy, then your current state is going to imply that. So perhaps the suggestion for when it's open source is, maybe even myself, we do some kind of guidance or documentation around what might be a, a great sample for you to take forward. Otherwise, if you give the organization on day one, go and do it, you're either going to get an amazing current state because you you've spoke to legal, you know that there's there on your scope of understanding, or you've just spoke to 50 developers who have no concept of governance and compliance. So indeed, and so that's that's why we do specifically focused interviews when we get involved in the, uh, in the additional step because then we we figure out who the, the people are in front of us and we know that what they're giving us is a perspective. Actually, in the questionnaire, so the, the model in, includes the roles for weighing the questions, at least weighing the answers. So we know that, for example, if a legal person is, is, is responding on, I don't know, marketing question, it probably weighs a little bit less than if they're, they're answering on a risk management question or something like that. Uh, so, so we we do take that into account into the, the weighing model, but yeah, further analysis will, will give much much more um, you know uh, fine grained result. Any other questions? I have no idea how we are on time. I think I think I think we're actually pretty good. Or, or late. <laughs> There's nobody banging at the door, so if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so watch, uh, watch the Finos GitHub. Uh, I think there is already a repository called OSMM, uh, github.com slash Finos slash OSMM. It's probably empty right now, but it's just about to start being populated with documentation uh, before the model actually gets put online. Thank you.